Hey, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to take on an oldie but a goodie. This one has certainly had a, uh, a well-used fishing life and uh, it shows its wear. It's missing an awful lot of paint. It's got a lot of dried grease on the casing and all. And it happens to be the Penn Spin Fisher 720. Now this is kind of a, an odd one in that most of the time we're used to the greenies or we're used to the, the Z series black and gold. And this one was just one of these uh, I don't want to say interim reels, but you just don't see this format as much. It's almost an aqua, aquamarine or a blue in color versus the green or the black. And in this case, it's hard to tell what it is because most of it has been worn off. But that's good because it means it's been used an awful lot. So I'm going to take it apart because it's very, very tired and sluggish. We'll find out what's going on. I'll show you how to uh, take it apart, how the reel was manufactured, how to service this and hopefully how to go get it fishing again. So this was part of a lot that I purchased. I uh, just did the previews on it, whether this one makes it ahead of the previews or not, I'm not sure, but I was able to purchase a lot of, uh, of quite a bit of fishing tackle and um, reels on a uh, Facebook Marketplace purchase recently. This was included in it and uh, we'll uh, get started. So when we get started, I'd like to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody who's involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. There are our local hometown heroes, if you know, uh, police, fire, first aid, first responders, essential medical and personnel and involved in teaching and the uh, transit systems and food delivery and the like. Tell them thanks. It really is appreciated what they do every day, day in and day out. Even as the uh, pandemic tends to wane, we still are faced with the folks that are in the hospitals, the folks that are still susceptible to, to uh, catching the virus, and uh, those unvaccinated. So give them, give them your thanks and let them know how much appreciated their service is. Okay, single screw take apart on this. This reel is very similar to a Mitchell 324 in the design. It's not the spiral gearing that you're used to seeing in the early uh, uh, Spin Fisher series. So one, one screw takes that out, a lot of dirt, and you can see why this is just so sluggish. It's got, oh, it's got a lot of years of just accumulated dry grease and junk in there. So let's get rid of it. Let's take it out, let's service it, and let's make sure that uh, it goes fishing again. I'm going to remove the button that uh, holds on the spool and controls the jag washers. I'm going to put those in there. Uh, inside, we're just going to take a look. It is clean, so that's always good. And uh, we're going to uh, next remove the handle. The handle will come off in a clockwise manner. I noticed a little chirping on this handle while that was going on, so I'm going to take some penetrating oil. And I'm just going to flood it just to uh, let it work its way into the little set that it's on. And then I'm going to put all my pieces and parts into a parch tray. It's nothing more than the bottom of the jug. But it helps me keep track of where everything is. Mop up that uh, penetrating oil. I made a little kitchen scrubby. And get rid of the dried grease on the inside of the case. Now this case has got some blistering going on. That means that probably salt water got in there, got trapped, and uh, just started to corrode. You can see how some of that comes off. If, uh, if this wasn't my reel, I guess I would be a little bit more concerned about the... Uh, being aggressive with cleaning it off, but I'd rather have a clean reel and, uh, than worry about the paint condition, particularly given that this whole outside of this reel is in pretty tough shape. So I'm going to use a real cleaner here. I'm just going to see what, we're going to, what we can do here to take that off. I want to be careful on this one. This does have a button on there, and if you do put it in like a, an ultrasonic cleaner or something, you can pop that button. Here's an example of it, not that it was a uh, uh, ultrasonic cleaner, but I, as part of that lot, I purchased a Pen 710Z, and the button was off of that in the box. I'm using uh, Pen Rod and Reel Cleaner for this experiment here. We'll see how it does with the kitchen scrubby to, uh, to take some of that old grease off. And it seems to be doing good enough. It's, uh, it doesn't have it all. If you wanted to get a little bit more aggressive, you could use a 4.0 steel wall. Just be careful, especially on something like this. It probably will scratch the paint off, given that the paint is in such tough condition. So I'm just going to let that patina be what it, what it is. The kitchen scrubby won't, uh, won't damage the wheel. And then we'll just wipe that down and put that into the parts tray. 
so often you can't find the uh, the badges. The badges uh, get lost, get knocked off, whatever, and then it's, it's even hard to, to identify what the reel is. Okay, so again, I mentioned this is a little bit of a setup like a Mitchell 324. It's got a center pin here that's uh, holding the crosswind block in, so you can generally just kind of pull that out. Generally speaking, you can pull that out, so right now that one's a little bit tight. That one's being particularly stubborn. I'm going to try a little screw up. There we go. So it's got a little U. It almost looks like a cable staple. I'm going to put that aside. When you pull that, uh, that little U-clip out, we should be able to get the axle shaft out next, which we can. And it was a little tight. You can feel the dried grease in there. Here comes the grease then. And that gives us access to the nut that's up top here. Find when it's going to work, and I'm going to have to pause the video, go get a deep socket. Okay, so we're back. I found a 3 8 inch nut driver. You're going to need a deep socket or something to clear the ridge here of this cup, and this one works fine. So we uh, can remove that. And again, you want to Clean that off and put that into a parts tray because you don't want to lose any of these pieces. They're very hard to find now, particularly in this, this version of the reel. All right, and then we should be able to remove our rotor cup. Now we have a tie down here that's holding our gear in place. So we're going to go ahead and use the screwdriver to, to hold that set, remove that. Just going to lay that on the table for a moment. Then we can pull the whole assembly up. And this looks very much like the uh, the Mitchell sets as well. So I'm not sure. I don't think that we have the ball bearings in this collar here. We don't. So I'm going to pull all of this apart. I'm going to spray it down. And then I'm going to put it right back together so that I don't lose any of this. I'm spraying it down with WD-40, which is a penetrating oil. I'm using that as a cleaner. And I'm going to do all of the parts right now. So it's... Uh, Good time to tell you if you like a video like this and uh, you're interested in reel repair or how reels are made or you're just kind of interested in reels in general, maybe you have one that needs to be repaired, uh, I'd ask you to subscribe to my channel because I post frequently and posting every day during the pandemic just in uh, kind of solidarity with healthcare workers and that, but I'm certainly not doing anything of any consequence versus what they're doing. But uh, I do uh, have been trying to do that. And uh, if you do hit the subscribe, hit the notification button. That way you'll see the ones that I'm posting. I recognize right away that all these videos are not for everybody. There's uh, folks that are interested in spinning reels or conventional reels or vintage reels or the like. So if you hit that notification button, you'll see which ones I'm working on. And you can make a determination as to whether that's something you want to watch or not recognize everybody's time is valuable. All right, we're just cleaning up that cross wind block now. It has a groove on the back of it, and that groove on the back of it is where the, the little stud on the main gear is going to go. And uh, we'll pull that main gear out in just a moment. But uh, we did clean that cross wind block up, so let's put that back in there. Now we have the, the center shaft, so let's clean all of that off. Now, if you were noticing any burrs or... Uh, or issues with this, then you would want to get uh, a minor abrasive out, maybe the steel wool or something, polish it up. But this one seems to be doing fine. And what I'm doing right now with the pick is I'm just clearing out the old grease from the core drive. It's also a good place to remind you to take pictures along the way because it's real easy to get lost in terms of the orientation of a of a piece or the order and the sequence that you took those pieces out and then uh, when you go to reassemble all of a sudden it wasn't as easy as you thought it was i do from time to time get uh, get real pictures in here and uh, folks are asking me if i can't help them because they started the disassembly of a product and uh, couldn't finish it so If you take the pictures along the way, that's going to help you to make that determination as to whether you got it right or not. Okay, 
I um, I may have made a mistake here, but I'm looking in terms of lighting this up. You want to make sure. So my question was which goes high and low, and I just uh, I'm able to logic that out between the washer and the thicknesses of these. We know which way this goes. So uh, sometimes uh, sometimes I use my pictures. My pictures are the videos that I'm posting. And frequently, well not as fre not that frequently, but frequently I will go back, stop my video, and say, gee, where did that washer come from? Or uh, what was the sequence that I took it off? Or what was the orientation of that part? So there you go. All right, so we're going to put a little bit of grease on here. And that's the reason I wear this protective glove, is sometimes you just can't, uh, can't control where that grease is going, and you want to make sure that uh, you protect yourself accordingly. Those pieces are going to go into my parts tray now, and I will push out that main gear. This pick becomes pretty, pretty good all around, and, and this is an example of that. We've got all that dried grease in here. Uh, that was our primary diagnosis in terms of why this wheel is bogged down, and you can see it just from the accumulation on the side. Again, I'll use a penetrating oil to mop up this, uh, this case cleanup here. I don't like using a penetrating oil. It says it lubricates. Yeah, it probably does. But it's not a good lubrication for fishing reels. It's just too thin. It evaporates. And uh, if you're going to use it, you're going to be using it an awful lot because it's just going to uh, break down quickly. So I recommend using fishing reel oils and greases. It doesn't matter to me what manufacturers you use. Just make sure it says fishing reel oil and grease. Uh, those are for marine applications. They handle water differently and um, protect yourself against some of the environments that are out there. So folks just, you know, want to use axle greases and all kinds of stuff. It used to be fashionable to use um, Vaseline, which is a petroleum jelly, so I guess you could use it. But again, same idea, it just doesn't, uh, doesn't stay that long. So the washer belongs on the back of the main gear, so for your can fish that out right now. The back of the main gear is clean, so I can just go ahead and put that there so I don't lose it. And then let's go ahead and use a paper towel to, to get what we weren't able to get with that cotton swab. And again, if you flood it with this penetrating oil, generally speaking, it'll do what you need to do in terms of the cleanup. If you really needed to go crazy, you could probably use a, an ultrasonic cleaner if it was really tough stuff. And I have one, and I use it occasionally, but uh, this one doesn't seem to demand that. It's just old dried grease. And all the old dried grease does is just takes, takes some patience to clean them up. I've been working on some reels for a party boat, charter boat. And I guess in the Northeast we call them party boats. And uh, boy, they've been filled with grease galore and uh, hasn't been much fun but uh, you got to get that old grease out of there it will trap the, the dirt and in our environment in the northeast here in the Atlantic seaboard uh, it's going to trap salt and the like and it's just going to going to ruin the, the reel over time all right well that's certainly a lot better than it was on the outside of the case again we can just kind of do our best we know we're not going to bring this one back to its original luster but if you uh, just kind of do what you can to clean it up, it'll be in good condition there. And I'll just kind of work through that. I'm going to avoid taking the anti-reverse override off. It, it's functioning the way it should. There is a spring under here. You might want to note it. There's a spring right here that's pushing it back and forth. Just make sure it's clean. But uh, other than that, uh, just get the the anti-reverse dog out of the way when you're uh, working with your main gear. So there's the problem right there, right? That's one of the, the problems. Back end of the case was a problem. This is a problem. So rinse and repeat, right? We're going to do the same thing on the main gear. I'm going to go ahead and grab the cotton swabs and the like. Get all that old grease off of there. Doing the best we can to, to clean up the old tarnish and the like. And again, this is an eccentric-based kind of a thing, so that crosswind block is never running 
where that uh, that tarnishes up here. Doesn't mean you shouldn't clean it off, but I guess one of my viewers informed me that it's centrifugal force that's going to throw the the grease out, and it's going to go to uh, where the force is least, which is on the outer rim. And I'm using a hard brush now. You could use a wire brush, you could use a pick, you could use a toothbrush. But I'm clearing the channels of the teeth on this gear. There's some old grease in there. Notice I have a paper towel under me that's catching the grease as it's coming off. I don't want to just keep recycling the grease on this. I want to get it out of there real. And then I'll go to a dry side of this and Chris is probably saying it's time to change my paper towel. And I will agree with him. So uh, we'll do one more little flood with the, um, the penetrating oil just to see if we can't use that as a, as a rinse. And then I would say that this main gear is in a whole lot better condition than it was when we started. And I would say that this thing is going to do just fine in conjunction with that uh, recently cleaned uh, pinion gear. Alright, check the teeth on this. Make sure that they're not scarred or in any way uh, damaged. Just check the... Uh, the, the slots and they, these are being thoroughly cleaned now and we can uh, we install on this. So you want to put a little bit of grease onto the main shaft on the back so that it slides easily in the case. We don't have ball bearings in this so uh, just uh, going to nest this one into a bushing so you want to make sure that it, uh, it nests nice and easily. Get a good amount of grease in here because it hasn't had grease in a while it's all been sitting on the side and get it on the face too. So you're doing the, the teeth of the gear, the face where that cross wind block is going to ride, and the back uh, shaft, which is going to ride in the case. So main gear goes in before you can put the uh, pinion gear back in. So let's get that back in. Now we can go to that pinion gear, which we assembled. That would go in next. And then there's a little slot, you saw that in that carrier. You can line that little slot up and then we can install this, which is the hold down screw. Then we'll get some of that stuff off the table there. Just give it a turn, make sure it's doing what it should. And by, just by turning by hand now I can see how much easier it is that it's turning. Okay, once we finish tightening that uh, little set screw, it's time to put the rotor on, make sure it's all clean. Put that on. Now we're looking into our parts tray. We need that little uh, tie down that goes on the rotor. And you need to find where the, the rotor piece intersects. There it is. And then you need to turn the rotor. There's a squared shoulder side of it there. And you want to make sure that you're on with that. And then we're going to put our 3 8 inch nut on. And again, if you don't have a nut driver, that's fine. It just happened to be the thing that I was able to grab. Uh, a deep socket will work, but you have to clear the shoulder on this cup here. That's, you want to do this by hand if you can because you don't want to cross strip the nut. And I apologize if my hand is in the way. There we go, we got it now. And then you can go ahead and do that. I just, just was working on a reel, just came into the shop. It's got a cross stripped um, star adjuster on it. It happens to be a an ocean reel with the, uh, the star drag, but uh, if you're not careful, that's exactly what can happen to your reel. All right, I'm going to grab a little grease then. I'm going to grease up the slot for the crosswind block. That crosswind block goes next. It rides on that little stud, so make sure that you have that set properly. Then once you align that, you can grab the axle shaft, make sure that's clean. Use a little bit of grease there. Don't use a lot because as you go to put this axle shaft through the, the pinion gear, any excess grease is just going to float off. So hold your, your block so that you make sure that it stays on that stud. Align these two holes so that you can align them with the two holes in the crosswind block. Get it all set up and then when you see the two holes come through, you're ready for that little metal U-clip that we took off. Now this was hard coming out. It may be hard going in. We'll find out. I need more hand strength than I have. I'm 
There you go. Okay. And then you can give it a turn, make sure everything's doing what it should be doing before you um, you close that side up. So here's your, your side plate cap then. And then you try to get your little screw, which was the first thing we took off. And then we're going to go up top. We'll just check those drag washers. With everything else I'm seeing, it's a chance that those drag washers are kind of stuck together. But we'll, uh, we'll just make sure that the drags are serviced as well. And of course, one more thing is the, the handle has got to go on. Okay, just complete wiping it down then. Now it's time to install the handle. So we'll grab that little cap that was laying around. Then our handle, remember we put that WD-40 on there. It's spinning nicely. Now if you wanted to, you could remove this handle. There's a screw here, very much similar to that uh, Mitchell 324 again. And uh, let's just go ahead and put that handle on. That goes on in a counterclockwise manner. This is a left-hand cranking wheel. Boy, is that smooth. I mean, it doesn't look like it's going to win any beauty contests, but boy, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of fish left in catching to be done there. All right, let's go up top here. We'll just grab this uh, this pick. We'll go through the, uh, the drag washers. We'll see what's going on there. So there's a C-clip. It's riding in the channel here. Try to find the place where the C-clip ends and go kind of over into the next one. Or sort of pick it out. Necessarily an easy task, but one that you should be doing. That's your C-clip. And then once you take the C-clip out, you should be able to get to the drag stack. And this has got Teflon washers in it, so I think we're okay. You want to clean the dirt out here, just like everything else in this reel. It's got a lot of dirt. I think there's another washer under there, too. And there is. But these are Teflon washers, so they don't require any service. And I guess that's good given the condition of this reel. Clean out the channel. I get to use that on a paper towel. Kind of mop up the excess. And let's take a look. You got the three washers. You got the three metals. So that means that the first set on this one is going to be a Teflon washer. Just make sure they're nice and clean. Then you're going to have two round washers. So one goes up top and one goes on the bottom with that hexagonal washer in between. Make sure that you, you clean off any debris there. And Chris, you'll get a bonus. I'm actually using three towels in this one. Let's use the second one now. Do the same. Now this is the hex one. The hex one has the circle in the hole but grabs the spool, not the axle shaft. And the last of the Teflon washers. So you don't have to oil a Teflon washer. They're a petroleum product. And I'm saying Teflon. It could be plastic. Uh, but they're a petroleum product, so they're naturally uh, self-lubricating. All right. And the top one goes on now. And this is a spring clip, so be careful with it when you go to reinstall. Just kind of the opposite of what you did. Find the, the slot with the one end of it. Kind of work it around. Eventually it will seat and just make sure it seats look so that you're, you're complete there. I can go on next. And then what we can do, can't do much with the uh, condition of this wheel, but just put a little bit of that rod and wheel cleaner on there, get some of that lifelong grime off of it there. And then we can reinstall. Okay, so this reel probably has a lot of stories to tell. I'd like to, to know some of them. I enjoy the patina on this one. This is a relatively smooth facing reel here. We'll give it a spin. A little chirp in there. There's probably something riding on the cup. The, the bail is working beautifully. Let's make sure that our anti-reverse works. So there you go. There you go, the, the Pen 720, nice condition for the condition it's in, nice patina, easy to service. If you have one of these, you now know how to service it. If you're thinking of buying one of these, you now know what the, uh, the reel is made of, and uh, hopefully it'll have a second chance to go fishing. So with that, I'm going to thank you for watching. I uh, appreciate uh, your comments and your viewership. 
And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And again, if you'd like to subscribe, please hit the notification button after subscribing to see all the, uh, the videos that I do. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.